Hello, I'm Robert Berrio. Welcome to my channel. It's the 21st of February and spring is just around the corner and I'm thinking about next summer's bicycle season. Um, this summer I plan on going on a long trip from Ottawa to Halifax and back, which is about 3,000 kilometers. And I'm thinking, supposing I'm going to buy a new bike, especially for touring, a new electric bike for touring, what would I want in the way of features? First, um, I would have to establish what, what, are, what, what are my needs. I'm going to be traveling about 100, 100 kilometers a day. I'll be staying in campgrounds every night in order to be able to recharge my battery or batteries. I'll be towing a 45 kilogram trailer equipped with a solar panel and that runs means about 100 pounds. If I'm going to be traveling four, five, six hours a day, day after day after day, I have to have as much comfort as possible with my bike. So one thing I would need, even though it may be a little sissy, is a step-through frame. For a guy my age, makes things a lot easier to get on and off the bike. I'd want to have upright seating because I'm limited in movement in my neck. So I have to be seated upright and I have to have comfortable handlebars and I have to have a comfortable saddle, a big, thick, comfortable saddle. Uh, I would also like to have front suspension to reduce the vibration on my hands and wrists. I'd like to have seat post suspension so that when I'm going over bumps, I wouldn't feel it as much. Uh, whereas the type, the type of assist that I would need, you know, there are two types of assist. There are cadence sensors and torque sensors. The cadence sensor detects uh, how fast you're turning the pedals. The torque sensor detects how much pressure you're putting on the pedals. And the difference is that with a cadence sensor, um, if, if you're starting from a dead stop, uh, it doesn't kick in right away. It kicks in once the, start, the bike actually starts moving forward. Whereas with the torque sensor, as soon as you apply pressure on the pedal, the bike starts moving forward and you get the impression that you're doing all the work yourself. You feel as though you're Superman. Um, now, when you're on a long trip, you're on the highway for hours, it really doesn't matter whether you have cadence sensor or torque sensor. I think it makes no difference. Uh, but one thing that I would like to have for sure, absolutely, is a throttle. Uh, in order to be able to uh, cycle even if I don't feel like pedaling. If I get hurt or I'm tired and I don't want to pedal with a throttle, I can, I can go as long as I want uh, without any effort. So I'd want to have a throttle control. There's, um, from what I gather, there are two types. There's one that operates with a thumb. Uh, and that doesn't sound too good to me because I think you'd get tired holding the throttle in a certain position with your thumb. The other way is with a twist control. And uh, there are two different kinds of twist controls. There's a full twist control, which means that the whole handle, bar, the whole handle turns and there is a partial twist control, which is a better one. The partial allows you to lean your hand on the handlebar and operate the, the uh, control with your thumb and forefinger, and that way it's more restful and you can keep the same position for, you know, uh, for hours at a time. Um, now, the other thing that's important is convenience. You're going to be day after day after day cycling and setting up camp and so forth. So you want as much convenience as possible. Uh, one thing that I would want is a handlebar bag in order to be able to keep small things like sunglasses and sunblock and Kleenex and so forth. Um, I'd like to have a frame lock. Um, when I'm stopping, let's say, at a, uh, at a store in the middle of nowhere where there's not much danger of theft, I still want to lock the bike, but I want to be able to do it rapidly with a frame lock. Now I'll put a picture in here so that you can see what it looks like in case you're not familiar with it. Uh, with a frame lock, you just put the key and it locks the rear wheel and you can't move the bike forward with it. Um, 
The other thing I want for sure is a bottle holder. I don't need two or three, just need the one because when you're, when you're touring, you're not in a hurry. So if your bottle is empty, you can refill it from, you can keep a larger bottle in your saddlebag and refill your bottle from the larger bottle. And there's no, no necessity to have two or three bottles uh, on, on your bike at the same time. One thing I would like to have is a map holder. Uh, although I'll be using the GPS on my phone a lot, um, in some cases I'll be using a paper map. Um, of course, I want a cell phone. Um, my cell phone is a lot more than a phone. It's a GPS. It gives me books to read at night. Um, um, it's my communication. It, it does everything for me. It's also my camera and my movie camera and everything. So obviously the cell phone. And I'd like to have a USB charging port on my bike so I can keep the phone charged up. Uh, from the point of view of safety, even though I don't intend to ride at night, I'd like to have powerful front and rear lights. The Pedego, unfortunately, didn't come with good lights. I had to buy off-the-shelf uh, lighting, which is easy to do and not very expensive anyways. Uh, for safety, I have a flag on my trailer to uh, make myself, to make me more visible to traffic. Um, obviously, I have a rear view mirror. I couldn't, I don't know how anybody can ride without uh, a rear view mirror. Um, so, um, now as to the type of motor, there's two kinds of motors. There's a hub motor that fits into the rear wheel. Uh, and it, it, it's a direct drive, so the motor turns at the same speed as the wheel. The other type is a, 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 a mid-drive motor, which is placed in the, uh, in the crank, in the pedal crank. The, the advantage of the mid-drive motor is that it can benefit from the gearing in your rear wheel, so, uh, it, it, so it gives you more torque. So you have to start off from a dead stop, let's say in the middle of a big hill and you're towing that heavy trailer, uh, it'll, uh, it'll be able to do so without straining the motor as much as with a hub drive. Um, I'd want to have a strong bicycle, a good strong frame with uh, heavy spokes, good st solid wheels with heavy spokes um, because it'll be going through a lot uh, over the long distances. Um, in the way of brakes, I absolutely need disc brakes um, because, you know, the bicycle itself is heavy, I'm towing a heavy trailer, so uh, the question would be, do I want hydraulic brakes or cable brakes? Um, hydraulic brakes are much more direct, they're a lot more solid feel, um, whereas the cable brakes are stretchy and they're sort of elastic, it doesn't give you the same feel. Um, the disadvantage of the hydraulic brakes is that I don't know how to repair it if it, if it leaks. If I'm stuck with a problem uh, in the middle of nowhere, I'd be in trouble. Whereas with cable brakes, if the cable brakes, I know how to repair it. I always keep a spare with me and only takes a few minutes to fix. Um, with regard to the motor, the size of the motor, I would say the bigger the better. In Canada, the maximum you're allowed is 500 watts, whereas in the States, you're allowed 750 watts. So, um, the Pedego comes with a 400 watt motor, 48 volts. It's pretty powerful, but you know, if I had the choice, I'd go for the maximum. Um, another feature that I think I would really like to have, and I don't have on my Pedego, is regenerative braking. Uh, regenerative braking, uh, what happens is when you're going down a hill, when you're braking while going down a hill, um, the motor acts as a generator and puts electricity back into the uh, battery. But the big advantage, I think, f from the safety point of view, is that when you're using regen braking, uh, you're saving on the bicycle's brakes. You're not using your brakes as much and you're not heating them up as much, and you're not burning them as much. So I think from a safety point of view, especially if you're going across Canada from one end to the other, you'd be going up and down 27,000 meters. That's a lot of hills to go down, so it would be a, a very good feature to have.
Um, the other thing is range. Um, I'd be doing 100 kilometers a day. Very few batteries can give you 100 kilometers. So it means having a second battery or having enough solar power uh, to be able to make up the difference. Um, at uh, 26 to 29 kilometers an hour, which is a, a speed that I like to keep, uh, it takes 10 watt hours uh, per kilometer. So with uh, the Pedigo's 720 watt hour battery, I could go about 70 kilometers at that speed. Um, what, however, if you had fast charging, you would, may not need a second battery. Um, most bikes take four to five hours to recharge an empty battery. Uh, whereas some e-bikes have a system that allows you to charge the battery in one hour. Now, if you had one hour charging, you could probably recharge your battery when you stop for lunch somewhere. Um, so that would obviate the need of buying a second battery. Um, so uh, I'm not sure that you always have access to electricity, though depends where you happen to be. Um, there are some nice things about the Pedigo uh, that I like. It's got that comfortable saddle. It's got seat post suspension. It has two inch wide tires, which give some comfort, uh, makes a softer ride. Um, front and rear fenders uh, and mud guards. They keep the dust and rain off your legs. And a chain guard, you know, keeps things clean. Um, so having said all this about uh, electric bikes, there's one thing, well, I would like to know more about, and that is recumbent bikes. I've never tried one. Uh, I don't know of any electric recumbent bikes. There might be some. Um, I wouldn't consider the three wheelers uh, because they're simply too wide. But I, I would, if I were to consider one, I would look at the, the two wheel recumbents. They look so comfortable. Um, I'd like to be able to try one. So, so um, uh, I'll leave you with that. If you have any comments or any suggestions for me, uh, please leave them in the comments and um, um, look up my other videos. Thank you for watching.